Sonny, let's go back after this 47-yard kick by Steve Little and see how the Cardinals are able to down the ball. You see the ball, the point's coming straight in. It bounced straight up in the air, and they got a, a second break. It stayed right there again until Brahaney uh, was able to capture the ball, but it really put the Redskins back the worst field position they've had in the game. 47-yard kick. Little now has kicked twice. He has a 41-yard average. His punting has been excellent. Benny Malone in the backfield. John Riggins is back there with him. And also Clarence Harmon. Three backs from the two-yard line. 14 to nothing. The Redskins with the lead. They're going to try to get it out with Riggins. And Riggins did get some operating room, but not much. Reaction that time by Mike Dawson, number 73. The number one draft pick for the Cardinals in 76. And so it's going to bring up second down and seven. Very precarious situation. The Cardinals who've had three costly fumbles would like now to come up with a big turnover as they trail 14 to nothing all 14 of those points coming in the first quarter there's Seisman for the year playing very confidently didn't he only one receiver split out on a second and seven from the five Benny Malone and Malone out to the 10 Malone's got the first down he's all the way out to the 17 yard line Good job by Benny Malone. Calvin Favron eventually made the stop. He's playing there as Mark Arneson is out now with a knee injury, won't return this half. You see the slashing type of runner that he is. He finds a split, cuts back through it, cuts back against the grain a little bit, and just keeps fighting. You see him throwing his other arm. Doesn't have the football, trying to punish the tackle. So Favron, number 59, who made that tackle, a second-round draft pick out of southeast Louisiana State. You see him now at the very bottom of the screen. He's playing in place of Arneson. On a first down, Malone again. And Malone spun around at the 20-yard line. Boy, he gets to that line of scrimmage in a hurry. Long strides. Bob Pollard making the tackle for St. Louis. Carl Allen did a good job then, too, coming back over and turning that play back in. But Washington, you got to give them a lot of credit. They got out of a very, very tough situation. Malone, 32 yards on seven carries as you look at the sellout crowd. Third sellout in as many games here in Bush Stadium in 1979. Well, what a beautiful day for it, huh? Oh, 63 degrees at kickoff time. Second down, nine. Reisman can't find anybody open. And here's his ability to scramble. Good job by Theismann. He picked up a couple of yards. But the coverage was excellent that time by St. Louis. He just couldn't find anybody open. Brings up a third down. And still six yards to go. But Theismann very, very good at running that football. Great quickness for his size. Uh, he's a good athlete. I think more than anything else, and besides the coverage, is that one of his offensive linemen on, in his block got up in front of him between the receiver and Joe and he couldn't see him and that's why he pulled the ball down wisely and ran with it. Third and six and the best third down offense in the NFC comes up. 51% coming into today. They've been able to convert on third down. Eisman, third down six near side and Clarence Harmon almost came up with it. Defending on the play, Tim Carney and that will bring up a fourth down now for the Washington Redskins. Feisman has hit four of six as Mike Bragg will come in and kick and Willard Harrell will go back for the Cardinals. So the Cardinals should good have good field position with still a lot of time left in this first half, five minutes and 19 seconds. You get the feeling, Sonny, if they would get on the board, it would change this game dramatically. I think in the second uh, quarter too, uh, Gary, the Redskins have outscored their opponents in the first three games, 48 to zip. <laughs> and, uh, and so this is a big quarter for the Redskins. It would mean a lot for the Cardinals to get back in here with a score. Here's Bragg. Good pressure put on by Fabron, and Bragg has that ball taking a bounce for him all the way down to the 45-yard line of St. Louis. Well, we'll be coming to week number five in the NFL next week, and look at some of the regional games we'll have coming your way. Minnesota, Detroit, Washington goes against Atlanta. That's a tough shore. That's going to be a big game as we'll have other regional games coming your way. Tampa Bay, Chicago, boy, those Buccaneers have been surprising. When St. Louis doesn't get a break either, do they? Uh oh going out to L.A. Be sure now to consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. Don't forget all and that's all. Don Hover over there. Third quarter score now on Houston, Cincinnati. 24 all. 
about that. Cincinnati's come back. Mounted a little charge at him. Anderson now has 36 yards on nine carries. Second down, 10. Four, 46 to go in this first half. Boy, the Redskins have really been a thorn in the Cardinals' side. Knocking them out of the playoffs in 76 and 77. The last time the Cardinals have won here was 75. Hart on a little delay to Wayne Morris, and Morris does all he can do to get back to the line of scrimmage. That was Dyron Talbert who got in there in a hurry. Yes, he did. Calby made a good play then. Tell you something, they also came with the safety blitz again. Take a look at this. You'll see there's Houston coming, everybody coming, the linebackers coming. Talbert got underneath, made a good play. Good penetration that time. Well, they made a lot of changes on this Washington team. It's funny they're still playing like some of those Redskins teams we've seen for years. They're still playing aggressively, and they, that, they knew they had to be aggressive today. Third and 10 from the 45. That's Dave Steep in motion. Hart hopes to get some time to throw. He's got the time. Mel Gray, fine. Defense by Lamar Parrish. Gray thought it was too good. He thought he might have been interfered with, but give credit to Parrish. He had that one defense. I don't understand the play there because Lamar Parrish is probably one of the best cornerbacks, if not the best single cover, as we said earlier, yet they're throwing the ball right in his territory all the time. Gray had no chance. There's Atlanta now. They've taken the lead, 13 to 10 in that one. Detroit had the early lead, and Falcons have come back. Here's Steve Little, 41-yard average. I think their bartender hit one in that one. Get a 26-yard field goal to put them up in that one, 13 to 10. Tim Mazzetti. Okay, this is Hardeman back. 343, and it's been a long first half for Cardinal fans. Little Hardeman will come up to the 20-yard line. Trying to go wide, and what a tackle is made by Kurt Allerman. Allerman is their leading special teams man. That was some one-on-one -on -one effort by the former Penn State All-American, and the ball will be set up at the 16-yard line. Let's look ahead now to next Saturday at 5 o'clock Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the World's Strongest Man competition. You're in that, aren't you? First time I'm going to miss it in a while. It upsets me, but you do have one of the guys right here that's uh, competing. Bob Young. <laughs> I think Sonny was second in the refrigerator contest. That's raiding right? the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> From the 16 of first down, straight ahead comes John Riggins. There's a flag on the play as Riggins is out to the 25-yard line. I think we're going to get a takedown on Bob Kazeel here. He kind of trapped Charlie Davis in. And so the holding penalty will be going against Washington, backing him up. So Washington the last two times has not had the good field position, but they got out of it the last time after starting from their own two-yard line. Here comes the step off, and Brett Cashin now. Let's listen to him, see what he has to say. Let's see if Kazeel was a guilty party. Holding by the offense, number 54, first down. Well, you quarterback spot everything, don't you? <laughs> Bob Kazeel is the guilty party. It was a takedown. <laughs> he gets a three for that. <laughs> first and 18 now for the Redskins. Three and a half minutes to go in this first half of play. Heisman from the goal line. Far side. Complete to Penny Malone. And that'll move it out to the 12-yard line. And they're still going to be about 13, 14 yards short of that first down. We were talking about the Sports Spectacular, the World's Strongest Men competition. Also the 1979 Canoe Kayak World Championship from John Kerr Ear, Quebec. And the Pacific Gymnastics Championship. Some of the outstanding performers. They're working out in Tucson prior to the start of competition, which will be October 1st. Outstanding team from Japan, the defending Olympic championship men's team, and the People's Republic of China. Back is Seisman to Reagan. Reagan with Fabron missing the tackle. Over there is Eric Williams, and he's going to be run out at the 20-yard line. Williams making the stop. And that's Carl Allen getting up very slowly on the play. Reagan shows you, you know, he, he likes to run inside, but if you show him some daylight outside, he'll take the take that line you see Favron coming in and missing the missing the tackle Eric Williams runs him out of bounds a little help from Carl Allen again but if he sees some daylight outside he'll take it and he picked up some uh, very valuable yards and 
You see at third and eight, the Cardinals would like to hold here. They still would have the good field position and still have a chance to get on the board. They trail 14 to nothing. Harmon and Hardeman, the running back. Bugs is split to the bottom of the screen. Ricky Thompson to the top. Beisman on third and eight. Over the middle, and a catch is made by Don Warren, their top draft pick in the sixth round, and he had people all around him, in particular Ken Green, the strong safety who tried to reach over him, but I don't know if he got the first down. It's going to be very, very close, but that was a heads-up catch by Warren. It was. It was the same pass that Gary Paris caught earlier for the Cardinals. You'll see as the... Uh we we'll take a look at it. He hooks right in the middle. He's trying to get enough for the first down, but I think in his effort to try to break the tackle, he may have come back a little bit. You see right here as he's trying to circle and come back, he can't quite stretch out enough. They're going to measure for it. He may have enough for it. I think the best thing you could say about Warren is what the coaches said. He's a player. Ooh. Boy, they didn't get it, did Would they? you look how close that is? And so Warren, a sixth-round pick out of San Diego State with his second catch of the year, but it's short of the first down. And I think that second effort on his part, trying to go back and, and break the tackle, cost him a first down there. You can't fault him for that in any way, though. And so the Cardinals, with two and a half minutes left in this first half, still have an excellent opportunity as Harrell will go back for the kick from Mike Bragg. Meisman is 6 of 8 in this game for 68 yards and one touchdown. Third quarter score now, Atlanta, Detroit. Mazzetti hit another one, a 22-yarder this time. He missed a big one last week, however, in that Denver game. Well, he's made three today. He's making up for it. He wants to keep his job. <laughs> There's Harrell waiting now for him to get this play underway as we've had a timeout called by St. Louis. The Cardinals with their first timeout. They have two remaining. As Kurt Allerman on the near side gets the information from Bud Wilkinson. Cardinals have had good field position now the last two times. Looking ahead to the World Series of Golf. The big names are going to be there in Akron, Ohio, starting next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 4 o'clock on Sunday. And how about this for a lineup, Sonny? Tom Watson, Hubie Green, Lee Trevino, Hale Irwin, Andy Beam, and some others. I tell you, it's become a much better golf tournament now. I, I think having the World Series like this because more people are participating in it. And uh, I think they enjoy it more, and I think the people do, too, because they get to see better golf. That's next Saturday, starting at 3.30. There's Jim Hart. They've already, I'm sure, decided what they're going to be calling when they get the football. A pretty smart uh, time for a timeout there, Gary, I thought, because uh, they were going to, Redskins were going to let the clock run down to two minutes, and uh, now the Cardinals will get a two-minute break, too. That's right. With 2.30, they approach the two-minute warning. This is Bragg kicking from the 11-yard line. And they're not putting on that big a rush, and Bragg hits it to the far side, kicking away from Harrell. Down there quickly is Phil Dubois, downing the ball for Washington, but the Cardinals will have excellent field position outside the 45-yard line. That Baltimore-Pittsburgh game, we have a score, but also a story on that game. That's right. It's not new news to the people around here because... Terry Bradshaw has been shaken up and has left the game. Undoubtedly will return. They're trailing 13 to 10. The reason you say that is last week here, he was carried off on a stretcher in the first half against St. Louis. They thought he was out, came back, and led him to a come-from-behind win. You never know. From the 47, Wayne Morris, Otis Anderson, the running back. That's Paris, number 89, the tight end. The Cardinals trailing 14 to nothing, hard on first down. He gets it off to Morris. Morris got a block from Bob Young. He's to the 45, to the 40. He's got the first down. Big block on the far side by Bob Young. Joe Lavender got over there and finally ran Morris out of bounds. He stops the clock with 2.12 remaining. A good play by the Cardinals. Good execution here. Same type of play that they fumble. Anderson fumbled at the Redskins, got their first touchdown. Good block there by Tom Banks. For Haney out there, and a good piece of running by Morris. That's Pick right. Up. It was Banks instead of Young. Tom Banks playing a guard instead of the center spot that did throw the block. First down at the 37, a 15-yard pickup on that play. Hart going for it all. Tilly, the intended man, but Lavender had him covered. There was just absolutely no chance on that play. And I am impressed with Parrish and Lavender today. They've done an excellent job, both of them. Uh, 
this is a one of the tendencies in, in talking with the players uh, down on the field before the game they felt that the Cardinals like to do this in plus territory they like to throw the bomb and that's exactly what they got there and obviously Joe Lavender was expecting it because he was closer to the ball and the receiver all Hart could do is just crank up and get rid of that one can you get too greedy sometimes well you do I'm sure they'd like to get on the board here you know they they got a playoff they're gonna get a break here at the two oh two six left and uh, they're gonna get the two-minute warning coming up probably after this play Second down 10 from the 37. The Cardinals with two timeouts remaining. This will be last play before the two-minute warning. Hart off to Otis Anderson. Anderson can't go anywhere. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Brad Dusick, the vastly underrated linebacker for Washington, made the tackle. The two-minute warning is here. The Cardinals will have a third down nine when we return to Bush Stadium. If women shave men's faces, we try to shave them a lot closer than men do because we know all about skin and Noxema. Trust me, the closer you shave, the more you need the medicated comfort of Noxema shave cream. Take it off, and what have you got? Skin smooth enough to get next to mine. Noxema. to tell you about peak antifreeze and coolant. Peak is liquid armor against sub-zero cold, against rust, against corrosion. This winter by peak protection, because nothing tops peak. Nothing. Gary Bender and Sonny Jurgensen at Bush Stadium. We've had the two-minute warning. 14 to nothing. The Redskins with the lead, but the Cardinals have an opportunity here. They have a third and nine. And the ball is resting at the 37-yard line of Washington. Big first down opportunity for him, Sonny. You get the feeling they need to get on the board. They need to move the ball. I think they need to get another first down before they reach field goal range. Tilly and Mel Gray, the wide receiver. Big pressure put on. Joe Jones is there first. And Jones just ran around the block. He went right by Bostic. Hardly even touched him. Hart is down, getting up slowly, and they're going to have to kick the football. That's, that's the second sack of the day. This is something Jim Hart is not used to, and you see right at the bottom of the screen, that's Joe Jones' strong point, rushing the passer. Bostic never got his feet set, never got in front of him. Jones went right around him with a good move and made the sack. Now Bostic is growing up in a hurry in this league. Replacing Dan Deardor. Big shoes to fill is Steve Little, who's kicked very well. Will kick from the 40. So another opportunity goes to the wayside for the Cardinals. High snap. Little kicking to the far side away from Hardeman. And the ball is going to be downed over there. Coming over quickly was Roy Green. And it's going to be inside the 15-yard line. So Washington, again, for the third straight time, has bad field position. But they have a 14 to nothing lead. And that's the important factor right now. Makes it a little more comfortable calling plays backed up, too, with a 14-0 lead. It all started in a hurry in this game, if you weren't with us. On the second play from scrimmage, Anderson, on a little flare pass, had the ball jarred loose, and an amazing scramble ensued. And finally, Hover fell on it in the end zone for a touchdown. I think people were coming off the bench trying to recover that one. Looks like we had 30 people on the field. <laughs> from the 15-yard line, Theismann off to Riggins, hit by Charlie Davis, and help arrive. Davis first there. Looks like Davis playing pretty good football game. It's Bud Wilkinson. What's he going to have to say at halftime? He's got to be a little concerned. This is the second game this year that his team has gotten behind early. The other one was against the Giants, but they came back and got those points back in a hurry, but they have it here today. And I also think we'll be surprised at halftime looking at the stats of this game because uh, I think they could be fairly close. Both quarterbacks have thrown the ball well. Uh, the running, uh, no big runs. The big pass to Buddy Hardeman, a big difference right now, plus that fumble. That was a 41-yard strike to him for the second touchdown. 45 seconds left in this first half. This is Penny Malone trying to get wide. He'll want to stay in bounds, and oof, the pursuit caught up with him at the 15-yard line. 
And you see the time in the upper right-hand portion as St. Louis uses their second timeout. Timeout they number two. Remaining. So the Cardinals, who played both Pittsburgh and Dallas down to the wire, losing by a total of four points in those two games. And you wonder, and Sonny, you don't want to take anything away from Washington, but it, when you play close like that sometimes, it takes something out of you. It does, especially when you have to be going into this game thinking that, look, things have got to be easier than they've been. We've played the two Super Bowl teams. Maybe things will be easier from now on. That's never the case. They get harder as the season goes on. You realize the Cardinals in the first eight weeks played six playoff teams. <laughs> what a schedule. And next week, one of those, Los Angeles. Then they have Houston. Of course, it's not going to be easy for Washington next week either. They go to Atlanta. Atlanta, then Philadelphia. Two big games for them. Got an update on the San Diego-New England score. New England is, is leading now 27-14. to 14. That game is in the fourth quarter. Grogan has only thrown one touchdown pass in that game. You're looking at Tom Banks, the all-pro center, is playing guard today. The offensive line for the Cardinals has just been excellent, but they've lost Deardorff, and they have Steve out of there, so really, in all intents and purposes, their entire right side of the line has been taken out of there for today's game. That may be a reason that uh, Mr. Hart's getting a little pressure, too, huh? They've given up five sacks coming into the day, but they've led the NFC in that department the last five years. Third down, 11 from the 14-yard line. Malone again, tripped up, and it's Davis again, 76. Boy, he's getting through there in a hurry. At halftime, we'll be joining the crew in the NFL today, Brent, along with Jane and Irv, as they'll update us on what's happening throughout the National Football League. You see 33 seconds. And back goes Willard Harrell for this anticipated punt from Bragg. As a timeout by St. Louis, they've used their third and final timeout. This is the kind of game where St. Louis probably felt like this is the longest half <laughs> in history. You know what? They've struggled uphill all day long, caused by the excellent defensive play of Washington, producing those three big turnovers. I think the blitz has bothered them that Washington has come with. It's on more frequency than uh, they usually do, and it was something, a tactic they wanted to use today and it's been effective for them. Uh, getting behind, Hart's had to put the ball up. They haven't been able to stay on the ground. But it's, the game is, you know, when you got a long half to play coming up, uh, it, you don't want to get away from your game plan too much. And now you, you're seeing them, I think, getting more back into their game plan. Well, I think we should mention that Washington's been outscored in the fourth quarter this year, 37-9. to nine. So they haven't been a good second-half ball club. It's that's been all first that, half. That's something that they're concerned about, too, believe me. Here's Harrell. 33 seconds left as you see it. Big rush by Dave Steve. He almost got it. Harrell doubles the ball. The Cardinals have got it. A flag is thrown at the 49-yard line. Maybe a penalty on the Redskins for not giving him enough room to catch your football. Let's see what it is. That's just a guess. Monty Coleman, I think it was a man down. He was awful close to it. I think you called it right. That's exactly what it was. They interfered with his ability to catch that ball. A 37-yard punt. Let's look back again. And he's supposed to have a right to catch the ball, and you see Coleman stuck a hand out there. Boy, it he was gets Monty down Coleman. there, doesn't he? Oh, he wants to play. That's a big break for him. Interference by the kickers with the opportunity to catch the kick. First down. You ever think about officiating? <laughs> no way. From the 36 now, that gives the Cardinals a last-ditch effort here with 25 seconds. That really helped their situation. Instead of having the ball at their own 49, they now have it at the skin's 36. Otis Anderson, Wayne Moore in the backfield. They're doubling both outside receivers. Hart with time to throw. He's got Mel Gray, and it's almost intercepted by Joe Lavender. Gray looked like he might have the reception, and all of a sudden, Lavender reached in. Joe, who has one interception this year. Boy, he has played so well for the Redskins. And at six foot four, he needed all that reach he had. He now, had second and ten. He actually had Dave Steve open and uh, cross the middle. He elected to go to the long one because realizing he's only got 19 seconds left, he's trying to get it all. Lavender almost came away with a big play.
Second down, 10 from the 36. You see the time remaining. Hart moving around a little bit. And it's Gray again. Gray having a tough time locating that football. And good pressure put on and good defensive work again by Joe Lavender. 13 seconds left. Hart's running around more today. Moving, I think the pressure is getting in front of him a little bit, and he had to move out of the pocket to give himself some, a throwing lane. He did, but uh, good coverage again by the secondary. And so it comes to a third and 10 from the 36. Halbert comes back in. Dave Butts checks out for Washington. Coming to the point now where you just got to crank one up and hope to get a pass interference or get into the end zone somehow. Did a game last week. Remember the last play of the half? They scored on a 52-yarder. New Orleans and Philadelphia. Hart to throw on the third and ten. This is Steve. Steve at the ten. He's to the five. They have no timeouts remaining. That's the problem. The Cardinals have no timeout, and they can't stop it. This first half has come to a close. And so the Cardinals have run out of time. Let's go now to the NFL today and Brett Musburger. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Herman Franks has quit as manager of the Chicago Cubs. A quick scoring update in baseball. Montreal 5, Philly 2, that is in the fourth. Pittsburgh 6, Chicago nothing, that in the third. Cincinnati now leading Houston 2 nothing in the fourth. Let's take you out of the NFL scoreboard and get you up to date. Detroit 17, Atlanta 16, that game now in the fourth quarter. Green Bay trying to beat Minnesota in Bloomington. 21-14 in the fourth. Bart Starr with a chance to win. Baltimore and Pittsburgh could be a big upset brewing there. 13-10 right now, the Colts ahead of the Steelers. And perhaps the wildest game of the day, more yet to come. 24-22, and I had Buffalo at least with 26 points. We'll get a check on that, Jane, and what have you got? Buffalo's come from behind on two long touchdown passes, one of 75 yards, the other 74 yards from Joe Ferguson. Rookie sensation, Jerry Butler. Houston and Cincinnati. It was 24 to nothing, Cincinnati. Now Houston has scored 27 unanswered points. San Diego and New England, 27 to 14. In the fourth, the Patriots ahead. And how'd they get that last touchdown, Jane? Because the Chargers had closed back. That was a five-yard pass. Grogan to tight end, Russ Francis. Kansas City, 14, Oakland nothing. That game is at the half. And Washington and St. Louis, of course, the game you're watching at halftime, still 14-0. I'm waiting for some more information on Buffalo. Meanwhile, let's take you now right to the highlights, Atlanta and Detroit. The story there, of course, the same as it's been all year. The Lions have lost a couple of quarterbacks, Danielson and Reed, so they have got the young man. Jeff Como looking for Fred Scott in the end zone, finds him. It was 7-0 Detroit after the extra point. Watch the snap coming up here. It's horrible. Bumble, Atlanta has recovered, and then after that, Steve Bartkowski went across on the quarterback sneak for a touchdown. I was right on Buffalo. The score in that game is 33-24. Buffalo now indeed leads the Jets. The score you saw on your screen was not correct. All right, Green Bay and Minnesota. Young Tommy Kramer is trying to step in and replace Fran Tarkenton, who has retired, of course, to the broadcasting booth of ABC, and Kramer has run hot and cold. Here he's hot with a little help from Ahmad Rashad. 7-0 after the extra point. David Whitehurst of the Packers looking for James Lofton. 7-7 after the extra point. Now Whitehurst drops back again. He'll go to Barty Smith, and Smith gets it down to the nine-yard line. And from there, it was Smith again from the one. It was 14-7 Packers. Robert Miller crashed across with the tying touchdown for Bud Grant. 14 all after the extra point. Watch the interception coming up here. Kramer drops back. Johnny Gray got it, and he gets up to the Viking 47-yard line. And then the touchdown came moments later that put the Packers ahead 21-14. It was Terdell Middleton in for the score. 21-14. Let's send you back now to Gary Bender in St. Louis. Gary? Thank you, Brett. As we have a 14-0 halftime score in favor of the Washington Redskins. And we're going to be back with more of our halftime activities after this. Sorry. I said we are not interested in that proposal. <sighs> the meeting is next Thursday, Bill. 
Fredericks, are you listening to me? Uh, if there's one thing you should remember about this deal... Not knowing how to listen has cost American business billions of dollars. Well, as one of the world's major corporations, we at Sperry are doing something about it. We've set up extensive listening programs that Sperry employees worldwide can take part in. And when you do business with Sperry Univac or any of our other divisions, you're going to discover that Sperry listens like no one you've ever done business with. 80,000! I said 8,000! No, no! Sperry, we understand how important it is to listen. Look what's happened to home heating and air conditioning costs. Up and up. Up over 80% in five years. But there's a way you can fight back in your attic. Add another layer of pink Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. Ask your dealer or contractor how much more you need. Fight back against rising fuel costs. Get Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now. It's cheaper than oil. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, look out for the return of the world's strongest men competition. When the big men vie for the title in the barrel lift, bar bend, and more tests of strength. Then it's action-packed international competition at the 1979 Canoe Kayak World Championships from Quebec. As challengers take on each other and the wild water. Plus the preview of the Pacific Invitational Gymnastic Championship. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. The Washington Redskins scoring all 14 of their points in the first quarter, and that's our halftime score. And a beautiful day here in St. Louis, a sellout crowd, the third in as many outings here in Bush Stadium. I have with us at halftime a man who is very well known in the baseball world, Bing Devine, who has now stepped over into the football side to join the football Cardinals as the vice president of administration. And Bing, I guess the most obvious thing is a lot of difference between baseball and football. Well, there's one big, great similarity in that uh, both games depend on the results of games on the field. And uh, you put the best personnel you can out there and hope that they're able to make you a success. That's about what it amounts to. There's uh, a lot of differences, too. I guess the main one I've noticed and I realized it before is the fact that in baseball, you play 162 games during the regular major league season. In football, obviously, you play a considerable number less. And each game in baseball is far less emotional and far less critical until you get down to the last week or two than the, even the first few games in football. So uh, you can't get as emotional about it. You know, when you start a baseball season, you tell yourself that even if you're competitive and perhaps even if you win, you're going to lose somewhere around 70 ball games. So you try and develop a philosophical approach about losing at least a certain number. And football is obviously that every game is critical and every game is emotional. You know, Bing, you so many years as the general manager of the baseball Cardinals, you knew everyone. You knew the minor league system. There's not a minor league system in football. Has it taken time to learn the strengths, the weaknesses of the other teams? I know you're very much involved in that. Well, I'm not as much. Well, really, I'm spending a year learning the uh, the business, so to speak, and I'm spending a great deal of my time the first year in areas that I know something about: administrative, public relations, relationship with the media, and in that in that situation, it's not too much different. You are correct that aside from the game, the number of games that I mentioned, is baseball develop, signs younger ball players. They put ball players in the minor leagues for anywhere from three to four to five years to develop into big league ball players. And the cost and the, the, the complications of signing your players and developing them are much greater than they are in football, where you scout the colleges, sign football players when they come out of college. And even though they're not ready to perform and be a star at the, at the major league level, they're ready to play here if they're accomplished at all. Thank you, Bing. Fine, thank Welcome you, Welcome to football. All right. Bing Devine, the Vice President of Administration for the Football Cardinals. 14-0, Washington will return after this station identification. It's my half, and I'm dumping it. Archie's new partner is Jewish, and you know what that means. You ain't my part! Archie Bunker's Place premieres tonight. This is CBS. Back with the second half. Okay, I'll get you. Come, you got to come over this way so we get on this blue. <laughs> okay. 
okay. Okay. Joining us here at halftime today is an all-pro offensive tackle, Dan Deardorff, who's out with leg ligaments, had an operation in his knee, and uh, going to miss the rest of the season. What do you think of the first half, Dan? I, I'm trying to wonder if the Cardinals can play two halves in a row that bad. Uh, just uh, They've got to be really upset in the locker room, and hopefully they're trying to work things out. They really made a lot of mistakes, didn't they? Oh, it's just hard to believe. I mean... Uh, and why do we always do it against Washington? It seems to we just make a trademark of starting off the game in the hole and to fumble on the second play and have it be a touchdown and then move the ball well and fumble it again. Uh, the frustration's got to be building up in those guys. The offensive line's really having some problems. I noticed that Banks moved to guard. Now he's moved back to center, and George Collins has had to go in. Well, we're hurting. There's no doubt about it. Uh, when Banks is at left guard, we've only got one man playing his regular spot that's Keith Wortman over at left tackle and now I don't know why Banks is back at center I don't know if there's something wrong with Bahaney but but now we've got two guys in there Bostic at, at right tackle who's never played a down before uh, we've got George Collins at left guard who's never played and and uh, you know Dyron and uh, you know he's you know he's liking having a guy that's only played one year before you have to tell me this. You're working with a young tackle from Clemson named Joe Bostic. Yeah. What's this story I hear about wearing a Redskin jersey to <laughs> practice this year? Well, I got out of the hospital Tuesday morning, and I and I, uh, I had to make my grand entrance somehow. So I, I, I got a Redskin jersey, and I came hobbling out on the field and tried to tried to pick him up. Obviously, you can tell that I really inspired them to on to <laughs> great things here today. I think they're going to win the game, Sonny. I really do. I, I think that uh, Pardee's got to be upset in the locker room right now at, at his team for, for not having this game iced down. And I don't think they do right now. We'll have to wait till the second half to determine it. Thank you, Dan. Good luck with the leg. Uh, football misses you. Well, thank you, and I miss it a whole bunch. Thanks for having me up. Thanks, honey. We'll be back with the start of the second half after these messages. It's official. Ford's answer to rebates, the largest incentives ever available to its dealers. The biggest clearance offer in Ford history just got bigger. See your Ford dealer and discover how many hundreds of dollars you can save on new trimmer LTDs, Mustang pace car replicas, elegant Thunderbirds, tough V8 pickups, vans, Broncos, Rancheros. Compare the total Ford deal with any other. You may well find it's the best value overall. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Where's that husband of yours? Okay, watch your back. Coming through. Is that all you carried up for? Is that all? This is Lohenra. So what are we celebrating? This is the second year we're sharing this house. I didn't think we'd make it through the second week. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be Lohenbra. Yeah, I shouldn't say this, because you might think I'm serious. But here's the good friend. Lohenbra. Hi, I'm John Riggins of the Royston Redskins. And this is my mother, Mildred a very brave and determined woman. We're here at the YWCA where the United Way supports a program to help rehabilitate women who have had mastectomy. Mom, why don't you tell them your story? Let's go in, John, and I'll tell you about it. You know, John, when I had my mastectomy, they didn't have a program like this, so I volunteered my services to help other women. There are specially designed exercises and discussion groups. Volunteers help provide the physical and emotional support these women need to feel whole again. It's so important to have someone who cares. A lot of volunteers, just like my mom, make this program work. Thanks to them, the United Way works here in Washington. And it works in your town, too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. Right, Mom? Right, John. Fourteen to nothing, our halftime score, and let's look now at some of the highlights of our first half of play. And the first one came on only the second play from the line of scrimmage. We're going to pick up the action. The Cardinals will have the football, and Sonny, what a way to start the game! Otis Anderson can't hang on to the football. Just a little outlet pass, 
Malat came up, made a big hit, and look at that ball, take some strange bounces. How many people, white shirts touched it, red shirts going after it. And <laughs> Hober came up with it. I'll and tell you. With 14.03, it was 7 to nothing. And then the Cardinals came back, and Jim Hart hit Dave Steep. So watch what's going to happen here. Watch Kenny Houston knock the ball loose from behind. Mark Murphy comes up with it, goes back up the sideline. Big play, big break for the Redskins because the Cardinals had come right back. Joe Theismann back. This play makes it 14 to nothing. Redskins, somebody made a big mistake in the secondary. Nobody covering Hardeman, but he just takes it down the field casually. To make it 14 nothing Redskins. That was a 41 yard completion. And now we're going to see Hart hit Mel Gray, and that means he's got one pass at least 79 straight games. And now watch this reverse. Again, Kenny Houston was the man that forced the play, botched the play up, and they come away with another turnover. And now you're going to see Hart coming back, scrambling around, and watch this from behind by Joe Jones. Joe Jones is specialty being pass rushing, and that's exactly what he did. I think he had two sacks in the first half. He did. Later in the game, he went around Joe Bostic. There's the offense or the statistics, and you mentioned it would be surprising, and it is. Well, you can see, look at St. Louis. They have 144 yards passing, uh, so the game is still pretty close. I was interested in what Dan Deardorff said. He thinks the Cardinals are going to come back and win this game because the Redskins failed to put them away. All right, Steve Little, who did an excellent job in the first half punting, will kick off. Back deep is Hardeman. And on the far side, the Redskins going to bring it out. Out to the 25-yard line comes Don Harris, who's a backup safety. And Harris brings it out to the 30-yard line, and Washington will have it there. The Redskins scoring all 14 of their points in the first quarter of play. A 23-yard return. Going to mark the ball actually short of the 30 at the 27-yard line. Now remember, all year long, Washington's led at halftime, but usually by 17 points or a 17-point total. They have a 14-0 lead here at halftime. Not been a good second-half ball club, and in particular, the fourth quarter. Weisman gives off to Penny Malone, and Malone across the 30 to the 32-yard line. He has played with enthusiasm today. He has. You know, just what we were talking about, Bradshaw left the game against Baltimore. Bradshaw is back in the game in the fourth quarter. He hit Benny Cunningham with a 28-yard touchdown pass. Pittsburgh is going back in front, 17-13. to 13. That's getting to be uh, a very familiar ring, isn't it? Carried off each week. But they're winning. You can't knock that. Gain of four, second and six from the 31. Seisman to Malone again. Malone trying to go wide. Not been going. That is Calvin Favron, that young rookie out of Southeast Louisiana State over there. He's their third round draft pick, if I'm not mistaken, and he really makes a fine play here coming across. Good play by Favron, splitting it. What they have, Anderson, Theotis Brown, Favron, and Bostic. Boy, that's some picks. They've had an excellent draft. They also had Thomas Lauder they're very high on. Roy Green, a defensive back, seven of the first eight picks made the team this year. Can you believe this Buffalo New York Jets score? It's 40 to 24 in the third quarter. Buffalo leading. Boy, the Jets have been involved in a lot of offense. Hardeman and Harmon, the running backs on the third and 11. Seisman, he has Fugit, the tight end, but he didn't hang on. Gene Fugit looked like he was going to make the catch at the 49, and the Cardinals have held on this first series. Well, he passed up Clarence Harmon wide open then. Harmon had enough for the first down and may have been able to break it all away. He elected to go over to him to Fugit. Fugit couldn't quite hold on to the ball. And so Mike Bragg will kick. And we have a new man going back this time with Harold. It's Thomas Lott, who we just mentioned a moment ago. Lott, the sixth-round draft pick, the former quarterback at the University of Oklahoma. He and Harold stand at the 30. There's Bragg's average. Boy, he placed one at the five-yard line in that first half, and he kicks this one extremely well. Over there, fair catch is made by Thomas Lott, and down there with good coverage again was Harris. And so now the Cardinals have an opportunity. They have it just outside the 30-yard line. They trail 14 to nothing. This baby's been from Maine to Malibu, but I don't let her go nowhere without the treatment. 
This is no car. This is a legend. And you better believe I give her the treatment. STP oil treatment. Since 1964, over half a billion cans have been sold. No other brand even comes close. So do what millions do. Give your car the treatment from STP. This sweetheart gets a treat. And this sweetheart gets the treatment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the toughest stealer of them all? When it starts to rain, the stealers start to bite and hold. Yeah, they do. Uniroyal presents the Steeler Radio. It's built tough with two steel belts, and it's tough to beat when you look at its price. You want to see a cowboy beat a Steeler? <laughs> the Uniroyal Steeler. You want a tough tire at a price that's fair? You want Uniroyal there. It's the World Series of Golf. Next Saturday and Sunday, the best of world-class players shoot for the title. In the World Series of Golf, you'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports. 41-yard kick by Mike Bragg, setting the ball up at the 31-yard line. We see now that Tom Banks has gone back to center. George Collins, second-year man from Georgia, has moved to guard. As Wartman now is in there along with Joe Bostic and Otis Anderson. Anderson came off the mark that time. Out to the 38. Let's go back and look at that left side now of the Cardinal offensive line. You see Wartman doing a good job there on Bacon, but the thing is, what's going to happen to uh, Collins and uh, the guard that has to go in and play? Hasn't played very much. He did a pretty good job that time on Talby. So they have Collins and Bostic, a first and a second year man, playing on that right side. Collins was a fourth round draft pick a year ago out of the University of Georgia. Anderson again, close to the first down. Ken Houston. <laughs> How does he make tackles there? I don't know. He looks like he's playing a down line spot when he makes those stops. The first time that they ran that play, it was almost the same play when they went through there. The fullback uh, led, and he had a lot of power and a lot of strength going up the middle behind Banks, Collins, and uh, Young, but uh, certainly didn't uh, look that way then. Houston sneaked in there. Look at that, would you? Yeah, they came back. San Diego got a, another touchdown run out of Williams. 27-21, that's fourth period, four minutes to go. Here we go, third and one. Cardinals give it to Wayne Morris, and he has the first down. He brings it out to the 44-yard line. Mark Murphy, the free safety, making a stop for Washington, and the Cardinals, got to give him a little confidence, been able to pick up that initial first down. Well, I think with, they're more effective with Banks back at the, the middle. You see him go through. He actually didn't make a block there, but... They made enough cavity there that it allowed Morris to sneak through and pick up the first down. So Jim Hart is 12 of 18 for 161 yards, has a first down at the 44. He gives off to Anderson. He's got Collins blocking ahead of him. Anderson can't quite get the corner turned and his forward progress to the 49-yard line. But that was Collins, who was really considered to have all the tools. Hasn't played that much, but being pressed into a lot of duty now with Terry Steve out of there. He pulled pretty well on that play. Looked like Washington stopped the play for no gain, and uh, they actually pick up about four, don't they? That's right. Second and six from the 48-yard line. Anderson in this game has 49 yards now on 12 carries. Both Gray and Tilly split to the bottom. Here's Hart, play action, and look out. Guess who? Ken Houston. <laughs> How can he get there that quickly? A safety blitz again. Boy, Jack Pardee likes that. He just had an outstanding linebacker himself. He likes those blitzes. They just have not made an adjustment for the blitz, and you see all the linebackers going, Hover going. Kenny Houston gets there first and makes the play. Ken Houston has played a remarkable game. I guess it shouldn't surprise you, though. He does all the time. He, he plays one every week, doesn't he? That's three sacks now on Hart. A loss of 25 yards. St. Louis, as you see, a big zero right now. Cardinals came in here with a total of nine sacks, but they got seven of them against New York. Hart again. Protection there. Throws. Anderson. And he was looking around a little bit there. Malas was right on top of him. That's, an, that's a good observation. A good observation, Gary. I think he did. I think he felt uh, Rich Malott closing the gap on him, getting a little close to him. Good protection. Jim stepping up to throw the ball. 
throws it out and you see him if he could have avoided lot I mean uh, Malott then he may have been able to run but he's too interested in trying to avoid him pick his eyes off the ball they're gonna have to kick it away so a fourth and 14 that's Hardeman and that's Steve Little average of 36 five he had a 47 yarder in the first half hit that one off the side of his foot but he's going to get a roll and a good roll inside the 25. Dave Steep is down there. And they're going to down it just inside the 25 yard line. So Little gets a very effective roll. The Redskins with the football. 10.48 to go, third quarter, and they still have that 14 0 lead. The key's supposed to be under the steps. I got it. Hey, here's a note. Gentlemen, my country estate is at your disposal. <laughs> there might even be a little something in the refrigerator regards Hank. Let it be low and brown. Low and brown. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Here's the Hank. <laughs> Wherever he is. <laughs> It's Ford Truck Week, the biggest clearance offer in Ford truck history. The best-selling trucks of the 70s must make way for the new 80 Ford trucks. Previously announced factory incentives to Ford dealers make lower prices possible so you can save hundreds on tough Ford V8 pickups, tough Ford V8 vans, tough Ford Broncos and Rancheros too. Save hundreds on the best-selling trucks of the 70s until the introduction of the 80s. See your Ford dealer now during Ford Truck Week. Monday night on CBS, a special. The White Shadow has charges of racism threatening Coach Reeves. And then on Mass, Hot Lips is the spy of all things. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and on WKRP in Cincinnati, Dr. Johnny Fever has woman trouble. And Lou Grant learns the hard way that an expose can sometimes backfire. That's Monday night on CBS. Outstanding lineup. WKRP. It's a good show to have woman trouble villain, isn't it? <laughs> From the 25 now, Malone and Riggins, the running backs. 14-0, the Redskins. They got all those points in the first quarter. Little play action, Theismann rolling out. Wide open, Fugit. Fugit has the first down. He fumbles the ball, but it goes out. It'll be Washington's ball. He picked up some additional yardage out to the 41. That's when you know you're having a, a bad day, when you start fumbling the ball, and the other, the other team fumbles it, and it goes right out of bounds for him. Boy, he had a... Everybody open here makes a good throw. Just finds Fugit drifting across the middle. Watch this ball comes loose early. Gained a few yards on the fumble, about three, I think. Danny Bugs over there was closest to the ball, and from the 41, a first down. Cardinals with three big turnovers early in this game, and it's haunted them ever since. Here comes Riggins across the 45, close to the 50-yard line. Well, you're talking about offensive blocking. Watch this. Everybody making a good block. Driving. Riggins cutting back. Seeing daylight. Cuts back in. Good run by John. And so they're going to have two yards to go for the first down. Second and two. George Stark and Jeff Williams did a good job at them. Um, good blocking over on that side. Riggins has had only 23 yards, but every time he carries the ball, you know he's carried it. He really punishes you. On the 49. Malone trying to get the first down. It's going to be close. Into the St. Louis end of the field at the 49. Charlie Davis again making the tackle. I think one of the biggest things about this team as a year ago, Sonny, is how that offensive line has improved. They hit the weights, didn't they? They worked in the offseason very hard. They have it, I think, the development of Jeff Williams. Uh, the size that he has, he's 6'4", about 260. And uh, he, he was a tackle last year. He came in late, and now he's playing well. He's playing conf with confidence. And uh, they are developing. You have to give Ray Callahan a lot of credit for, for working with these men and uh, developing that line. They have no breakdowns. Uh, and another thing you can accredit to, too, is the fact that uh, they're staying healthy, Gary. That was the story a year ago. Stark got hurt. They had problems with Hermanling. He's healthy for the first time in years. All right, if you can keep your team healthy, they're the teams that are going to be successful. You look at the Cardinals today, and look how many people they've lost. Arneson's out. And uh, Deardorff out, Steve out. That was the first down. The measurement indicating that as Seisman back. Pressure put on by Davis. Got the ball to Danny Bugs. And Bugs out of bounds. No. 
They're not going to rule that a completion. He didn't have both feet in. That looked like a good call by Carl Allen, didn't it? Let's see if we can pick this up. Let's see if we can see it. We'll see if we can see if he double touches here. Both feet have to touch. Let's see. One. Uh-oh. Couldn't see a man got in the way. I have to give it to him. <laughs> well, you quarterbacks are all alike. I got to give it to him. It's an <laughs> offensive play. <laughs> Look good from here. <laughs> I was going to believe you had excellent eyes, but I'm not <laughs> sure now. Second and 10 from the 49. I thought he had three feet in. <laughs> Tell you, he threw that ball with Charlie Davis all around him. Draped over him. Heisman again. Off to Malone. And coming through is Tim Carney. What a hit by Carney. <laughs> that might be the kind of enthusiasm that defense needs. That's the difference in the Cardinal defense. This year, aggressiveness. Look at him. Come through, coming behind the blocks. Didn't allow... Ron Saul to pick him up. You saw Saul reaching for him, couldn't quite get him. He split the blockers and made a big play. You know, you look at it defensively, other than that 141-yard completion, this defense has really played well for St. Louis. They have. This is something they've gone back to their uh, prevent type setup here, something they got out of in the first half a little bit. The Cardinals in their nickel coverage. Third and 13. Heisman. Excellent protection. Got his man. Drop. And Buddy Hardeman. He caught that 41-yard pass for a touchdown earlier. A little upset at himself. We have an overtime game. The Vikings and Packers. Boy, have they had some battles through the years. 21-21. Got another game tied up also right now. And that's with three minutes left. Cincinnati and Houston are tied up at 27 apiece. Willard Harrell goes back. Rag to kick, 8.44 remaining in the third quarter. A lot of time, a 14-0 lead for Washington. Let's see if they kick away from him again. No, sir, they're going right at him. Harrell inside the 10-yard line. Going to try to get to the picket line. And he does a pretty good job just getting where he did. Out to the 12, possibly the 13-yard line. And that was Buddy Hardiman that came back to make the tackle. So the Cardinals do not have good field position after a 44-yard kick by Mike Bray. We're at the National Computer Conference. Over 400 computer companies are showing their products. And IBM is showing its lower-priced 4331 computer. This is built for an office environment, doesn't need extra air conditioning. The logic inside this machine is only about the size of a toaster oven. This IBM computer incorporates important technological innovations. For example, logic circuits that used to take up this much space now take up this much. We're giving you more capability at a lower cost. This has got to be the only industry with the prices going down. Compared to previous IBM computers of similar capacity, this computer uses 70% less energy and sells for less than half the price. Yeah, that should cut out cost. IBM never stops working to improve the computer. But then, IBM's competitors aren't standing still either. IBM, helping put information to work for people. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, look out for the return of the world's strongest men competition. The action-packed competition of the 79 Canoe Kayak World Championships and more. You'll say... You saw it on CBS Sports.